Hey guys, Petey here. Hope you're having a good day today. Hey, I wanted to show you guys something that I found on Reddit. It's actually really cool. And it has to do with Hunt Showdown. Out of all the hours I've played and since playing this game, since release, I still had no idea that this existed. So I don't know if you guys have seen it before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But regardless, I think it's really cool. I saw a little bit of it when I saw it on Reddit and I was like, dude, I have to make a video on this because it was that cool. And so um, today we're going to be looking at Hunt Showdown and what it was supposed to be. So Hunt Showdown turned into a completely different game than what we have right now. And right now I still love what it is, uh, but what it was before from the little bit that I saw, it was, it was pretty cool. So I wanted to watch the E3 video and I've actually found some schematics, blueprints or concept art, I guess you could say, of guns that they wanted to implement and monsters that they wanted to implement into what the previous version of Hunt Showdown was. So I wanted to show you guys that too and kind of go over it. I have seen the concepts and uh, I have a lot to say about those, but I haven't seen the, the gameplay footage of it and them releasing it which I have the video pulled up right here so we're gonna watch this together hey guys welcome back welcome back to the Samsung stage we're live on GameSpot it's E3 it's day two and I'm joined I'm joined by Dave yes Dave from Crytek Dave what are you gonna show off uh, today? today we're showing Hunt Horrors of the Gilded Age Hunt Hor Horrors of the Gilded Age so Hunt this was just Horrors of the Gilded Age quite recently, is what it was right? when did you first start talking yeah, about the game I think a week ago maybe a week ago yeah, wow it's brand new yeah absolutely. so in, in case people watching haven't heard of it Give us a load. I'm like, what is Hunt Horror? And keep in mind, this was 2014, and Hunt released in yeah, 2018. Let's call it Hunt. Sure. Okay, tell me so, about Hunt. Yeah, Hunt's a co-op action RPG where you play a monster hunter in the late 1800s. All and, right. Uh, it's all about teaming up with friends and going out to take down big ass bosses. And really, I feel like this game almost like epitomizes all the things that are popular at E3 this year. You've got co-op, which is like everywhere. You've got big monsters, which is also you know you can evolve in various other games. So it's kind of similar. This year. And but I think there was less kind of, of a PvP aspect <laughs> in this well, version like, of the game. So you guys have seen it into the future of all the things that E3 is about and thrown them together in your game. I think we've got some gameplay to check out as well, so we'll throw that up on screen and, and maybe we can talk me through what's going on. Sure thing. But yeah. um, So what's the kind of ethos behind this game? Is it like... Is it just about having fun hunting them monsters with your friends, or what's the kind of vibe Ain't you going no for? So yeah, basically, we wanted to make a game that was all about killing bosses. There's even and, dialogue. Uh, you know, we love the setting because it allowed us to have a world where there's oh, electricity. This is another thing too. Third person, railroads. third person camera sort of mode. Bro, nuts. Kind of wish we had here, that in Hunt Showdown. Not gonna lie. Where you could imagine these crazy creatures still exist, and a, a big aspect of the game is. Um, you're hunting down actual myths and folklore of the time period. So the witch. this mission here is about killing something called the Nightmare Witch, which is actually folklore about a witch that comes to you when you're sleeping and like sits on your chest or something. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's about <laughs> sleep paralysis. <laughs> sits on yeah, your yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, what uh, a way to go we out. We basically took that idea and turned it into a boss. Ooh. And so we wanted to have all these cool touch points. So if you're like, you see something in the game, you could go on Wikipedia and go, hey, that was actually a real thing. That's pretty cool. Hmm. So what's going on here? So, you, so you're starting off, um, everyone's being very sneaky. Sure. So you're just trying to track her down? Yeah, so where she I is. mean, the game's an RPG, so there's a lot of build-up and player progression and uh, development. Dude, this, this is point. nuts. But I think at this point, the players have sort of tracked down the boss, and now they're going to kill her. So who are these other enemies, then? Are they uh, these like are the, these are, we call them the Broken, but they're basically hillbillies of the swamp. And, uh, Hillbillies of the Swamp, the Broken. So no zombies, I guess? Uh, yeah. We got these guys, we got like Voodoo Cultists, we got Undead. Um, and that's just in this area of the game. That It is actually an international mod spawning, monster hunting enterprise. So. It's one way to jump through a window. That was, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty, pretty insane. Yeah, when we put that in the game, everybody stopped using doors. Even yeah, if the yeah. window's like two inches from the door, they jumped through the window. But uh, anyway, we won't have a lot of different creature variety. And, you know, this is one example of some of the creatures in the game. But everywhere you go in the game, every different area is going to have a different set of enemies to fight. This is what very, are you doing? Uh, reminds me very much of the Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, these guys are very Hills yeah. Have Eyes-ish, yes. They're kind of like the, the twisted black magic cultists that hide out in the middle of the swamp that you don't know about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other cool thing about the game is we wanted to get very authentic with the weaponry. Yeah. And so a lot of the weapons are very period based. You know, you guys. Is it crazy? Like, like there's a hatchet in that guy's hand, but it took them forever to put a hatchet you know, it's not in the like hunt show down. Where you can just clip, reload, and shoot really fast. You actually have to reload each bullet one at a time, and so it adds a cool, unique uh, pacing to the game you don't see in a lot of other games. Wow, and it's uh, quite easy to die as well. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty deadly, and that's you know that was a big part of the game. We didn't want it to be easy. We wanted the we wanted it to be a challenge. You are fighting pretty crazy stuff, but yeah. we also wanted to work the aspect of death what? into the game. <laughs> and uh, you'll see coming up, we have a pretty re unique respawn system, and that kind of ties into that fact that you are going to die a lot, but it's okay because there's a cool aspect to it that 
plays out from that. So how does each kind of uh, each encounter, each mission kind of kind of shape up? You have to track down the uh, the monster first, the boss first, or how yeah. Exactly? So there's actually a ton of missions like types that exist in outside the boss fight that okay. you play through. And during the course of that, you're kind of gathering information, um, collecting cues, clues to find out where the bosses are, so you can go hunt down and kill them. And the cool part about that is all those missions are randomly generated. So it's a random layout. The enemies are randomized. Wow. Um, the events within the missions are randomized. So every hmm. time you go in, you don't really know what's going to go on. Other than, hey, we're going to the swamp to kill stuff, you might stumble across some weird uh, ritual, or you might find some dark altar, or you might find some people that have been kidnapped and you need to be rescued. And so it's kind of cool. We, you know, Our goal in the beginning was like, hey, we'll make this infinite adventure system where people can just play over and over again, and just cool shit happens, and it's unpredictable. So it's uh, it's looking really cute as well. It's just, this is in CryEngine, right? Yeah, this yeah. is all in CryEngine. Um, this is crazy. We built our own, you know. What do you guys think about like having the zombies the versus these guys? It's like, nice. I think it's having zombies nice is having nice. With all the bells and whistles that CryEngine does. Because this would be a pain say, to try to deal with with enemy then, players, but I think would, if so done properly, would be done like pretty a, cool. Uh, conserve ammo mechanism. You know, resources are limited in this game. You don't have infinite ammo, so it's a really big deal to find ammo to find oil for your lantern. And so the melee is something you Oil use when you're kind of low on ammo or you want to conserve ammo. But it's actually pretty deadly. To eat. It's deadly against the enemies, but it's also dangerous for you because you have to close up and get close. And as I said earlier, it, the enemies are pretty tough. Um, this is an example of the respawn system. So when you die, um, you actually appear somewhere on the map randomly. You might be in a coffin or hanging from a rope. <laughs> this guy appeared in a coffin. So he's actually so looking like, out through the cross and the door. He's like, so yeah, like left for dead. Yeah, basically. And so you got to wait for one of your friends to come up Let's and go. rescue, which is pretty cool. So what? What are the best ways to work together then? What, he what's acted the like that was so unique. It was just like left for dead. There's a couple things. I mean, obviously the enemies are really tough, so you've got to stick together. Um, you get wounded in the game. This guy's actually wounded. He's going to die, but you go into a wounded state, and you're yeah. a lot slower and more vulnerable, but players can jump over and assist you and, not, and help you out of that state. Um, but a big part of the tactics is oh. how you build your character. Where did that one go? And one thing we want to do is we have what, it's like a flexible loadout system. You can build your own archetype. There's no defined classes. And so you can pick your weapons, the way your guy looks, and it's really, and your abilities. And so how you equip the abilities with the other groups and players in the group, it dictates the tactics. So you might bring Just like uh, medical now. bags so you can help heal people. I might bring dynamite so I can blow up crazies. And, uh, you know, we have more supernatural stuff that's in the game, too, that you get from beating the bosses. So it's really about that team loadout and how you go in and tackle the fight that a lot of the co-op elements of the game come to play. Reloading. So I mean, what, what's your what's your kind of inspiration? Got for this? that Gears I mean, of War voice one going of the, on. The games back Reloading. in the, the GameSpot UK office where I'm based in London. The game we play more than anything else to, like, together is Left 4 Dead 2, right? Sure. Just just a great fun for dropping in, oh, playing a few rounds, then going home. I mean, are, are you going for a similar type of vibe with this game? Is yeah, I think that you know we we love co-op. You know, even we, we, a lot of us came from Darksiders and Vigil, and we always wanted to make that game yeah. four-player co-op. You know, we love Diablo, Left 4 Dead. You know, MMOs, any game. It's just fun to get together with a group of guys, and I think one of the things we definitely took from Left 4 Dead. Oh, okay, they're the like zombies. Based, like a lot more, a 10, lot more mission, aggressive. And then you're done, and you can do the next one. Yeah. But we wanted to build a game that was, you know, much more diverse. You got tons of different enemies. You got a whole pro RPG progression system. You have tons of cool boss fights, and so yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely flamethrower. Doing all that together. That would be cool, so cool sick. Are you kidding me? Just a lot of fun. So you get flamethrowers, you get man, you get a whole bunch of different weaponry. Yeah, the flamethrower is cool because um, one cool thing to play with is the idea of future tech in the 1880s. Yeah. Because they had flamethrowers in World War One, right? And they had yeah. automatic yeah. weapons in World War One. So we kind of imagine that, hey, yeah, you got these period 1880 weapons, but at some point, as you get better, you start to Give play with us the future the technology, which at the time is that stuff that was in like the 1890s or 1910. And so it allows us to introduce some interesting weapons. Yeah, this guy was de died and. He's now hanging upside down. It's kind of cool. He sees the whole fight from his vantage point. Yeah. Pretty vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't save him, uh, could enemies come and kill him again? Like yeah, you can die. And it's actually the game's friendly fire. You could actually kill him on the rope. Um, but the game's definitely balanced to the, where you need the other players to survive. So, yeah. I mean, if you really want to, sure, you could leave him hanging. You, you, but you, you, you could roast him right there if you want yeah, to. I'm exactly. not saying you should, but I don't think he's going to save him there. Yeah, it's definitely right in your best interest to help. Uh, save guys so that you have a full team of four players. So uh, remind me, what, what systems is, uh, is, this, is Hunt coming out on? So it's going to be on PC and next-gen consoles. PC uh, and next-gen, right, right, right. Okay. So this is a good example. Um, there's a bunch of items in the game that aren't guns. Okay. Um, anywhere from like dynamite or a medical bag to a little more occult or fantastical things that you kind of build based on the enemies you defeat. Some dude that's just it. a simple one that kind of shows you where to go. Oh, that was just that was just to your path. Sure, right? yeah, okay, and that's cool. something someone would have would so have chosen to bring out of the, the fight. Swamp. It's not automatic. 
But there's tons Rising of different items the like that. That's We're not cool. talking about them now because, honestly, we haven't finalized them all yet. We're yeah, only yeah. a year in. But uh, that's also a big part of the game and that loadout aspect of preparing for the battle with your friends. So this is the this is actually the boss, the Nightmare Witch. So yeah, this was, was her, uh, all leading up to the boss. Boss arena, so would you will. Of course, you meet her in a graveyard. Of course. <laughs> So one thing we want to do what? too is a Could lot of, in the boss fights we want to encourage cooperative mechanics and uh, no. you'll see a pretty I feel cool like they have a lot where, more bosses. Uh, the nightmare which actually pulls one of the players into her nightmare realm. In the words, and when and that, that they happens, could add. they're the only player that can see the witch, and no one else can. All but right. if they shoot the witch, like then they have to have basically like everyone ideas else can see her for when they were she doing kind this. Of flashes. So that guy kind of has to, to shoot the witch the to keep her marked. That boss would be cool. And we want to try to build those type of cooperative mechanics in the boss fights so they're not just straightforward boss fights, four guys with guns. So did you, um, for inspiration for your bosses, did you pull from, like, folklore and everything from yeah. this period of time? It definitely starts as folklore, and then it's, you know, a bunch of imagination on top of that. You know, because the folklores are pretty basic. It's like, hey, Yo, there's a witch like, that comes sick. to you when you're sleeping and sleeps on your, lays on your chest. It's like, yeah. okay, how do this we turn boss that into a boss is, fight? This boss is really cool. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of creativity that <coughs> How do you go from, that, like, creating something there, so crazy, guy, like the yeah, flying duchess, the right now, to giving us her, a fat bird <laughs> as a boss? Her, like, pop in every once in a while. You give us a fat her, bird that doesn't drop any items for us. Like, this boss is so unique, so crazy, like, but you give us scrap beats? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, what other type of places will, will you get to go and uh, uh, so, you know, We'll be talking about that coming up. But I mean, it's okay. definitely, you know, there's a lot of cool opportunity in the time period because you could be anywhere yeah. from New York or London that's pretty advanced for the time period to like, you know, Romania or South America that's really backwater. So there's a lot of diversity in locales. Crazy, dude. Like, think, it was know, like the, the 1800 you know, Doc Ock. It's like, these are ordinary guys fighting these extraordinary bosses. Yeah. They're not superheroes. They're not you know, secret agents. They're just like dudes that picked up a shotgun and said, hey, we need to kill that witch. <laughs> She's pissing us off. Let's go take her out. Oh, hit with that ad, Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> so here you can see she actually pulls another one of the players into the Nightmare Realm. That's not good. That's there it. We go. That's the Horrors of, of the Gilded, the Gilded Age. Age. Yeah, well, um, uh, Different if you're logo, watching everything. home and you have any questions, it's because this might be the first time you've ever seen Hunt. So the best thing to do would be to tweet directly at me at CamFrazRob, and I will throw those questions straight to Dave right here. Now, hmm. I've, still, I've still got a couple more things I wanted to ask you. Just basically about like... Tweet him now, see what he says. About the, the four-player co-op and like... Sure. In fact, can you, can you play with just two people, with just with three people, with yeah, one absolutely. yourself? Yeah, like, You can play with any combination of one to four players. Okay, right. I mean, there are some like really tough bosses in the game that you're definitely going to want to team up with some other players. I mean, do they scale? Down. So if you have four people and the boss is harder? Yeah, or? yeah well, the game, the, most of the game scales, but like I said, there will be like epic encounters where you need a full contingent of four guys or you need to be really, really good to take it down by yourself. But So, I mean, we mentioned Left 4 Dead 2, but what other games have, did you get to look at or other kind of media did you look at Very for inspiration? Very Left 4 Dead 2-ish. Oh, man, I mean, tons of games. Left 4 Dead Resident Evil is another great inspiration, just the types of enemies and the pacing and that sort of thing. You know, Last of Us. I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things when you make games, you just look at everything. Yeah, it's yeah. like every Absolutely. game's built on a you mountain just, you of just games. Pick, you pick the, the, your favorite bits from the other yeah, games. Yeah, absolutely. Like, but really, we wanted a game we thought was cool was this, hey, here's a co-op game that's focused on killing bosses. Yeah. And yeah. there's not really a lot of games like that, you it's know. True. So, And that was really what it was out. Let's make this cool Sessions-based boss hunting game. And that's what we made. Not a lot so of I games that was out like that. Let's, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like, very cool. And I think it's cool to see because we know and love Hunt for what it is now. And so seeing what Hunt Showdown could have been is very cool to see. Um, however, what I will say is... I'm, while watching that, I was trying to pick out, like, what game is this like? This is like this game? Uh, yeah, this is like this game? Yeah, this is like this game? Yeah, it, it, was, you know, it reminded me so much of other games who have done that same thing. I guarantee you that if this came out, you know, in 24, 2015, I guess, was when that was slated to come out since they're showing it in 2014. If that game would have come out in 2015, Hunt, Hunt of the Gilded Age or whatever... I would have been done with it already. Like, I probably would not be playing that right now in 2022, to be completely honest with you. It just looks too much like other games that we have. And though it looks very cool and unique and different, I do not think that what they had then could have, you know, built the longevity of, you know, what we, what we have now. 
So with that, be, I mean, it, it, it looks like Left 4 Dead, obviously taking inspiration from that with the revive system. It looks very similar to, um, what is it, Remnant Beyond Ashes? Revenant Beyond that? Remnant? Um, something like that. It's like Remnant Beyond the Ashes, I think is what it's called. Very good game. Awesome game. But I beat it. I'm done with it. I'm over with it. Not playing it anymore. That's what it seems like here with this thing. And that game as well had totally randomized maps and locations and different spawns and different things like to the almost to the exact same T as what he was saying. So I feel like that the direction that they went with and what we have now is ultimately great and good and beneficial. It adds a lot of replayability having player aspect into the game. Um, I feel like that there is a lot of things there though that they are currently sitting on from horrors of the gilded age um what it was uh, that they can still add in like that boss that witch was absolutely insane like i didn't get to see her sit on the chest like he said but it, it still looked really cool nonetheless um but keep in mind too like you know this was announced in 2014 i am almost positive hunt showdown released in 2018 which means they re-flipped that. They flipped that game on its head in the span of four years. Good time, but also like crazy, to like what we have now. And then it released in 2018. I'm almost positive it did. I could be totally wrong on that. It's when I started playing at it. I went to E3 in 2017, and I saw the developers at 2017. Um, and there was like rumors of like a worm boss back in 2017. Like when I went, there was like rumors of a worm type boss and i haven't seen that since and there was rumors of like a winterized map i don't know i feel like that the hunt team is really sitting on a bunch of really cool stuff um unfortunately all we get is hunter skins and i don't know how much longer we can take of that like they're very cool don't get me wrong but after seeing what we have there and what they did and what we could get in the game as far as new bosses, maybe new enemies, like, like, can you imagine sprinting zombies like that, popping out of the swamp and running at you? Like, I think there's a lot of cool things that could be done. I, I'm, I'm kind of tired of the, of the unlimited skins or every update new skins and, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that uh, Hunt right now is going through a dry spell. Um, plagued with all kinds of connectivity issues, plagued with all kinds of um, rubber banding issues, and just kind of like dry spells as far as updates go. Like the past few updates haven't been great. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. I know the game will get better. Um, but this is nuts, dude. I, 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 I loved it. Um, you can watch the rest of the video and see what they say about it. I think I've seen everything that needs to be seen from that video. Uh, now, here's some concept from the guns that they were going to put in the game, which I think revolve a lot, a lot along the lines of like sci-fi 1800. So these say uh, Hunt Showdown like stamped. I think that that's just like these are archived. Uh, but lightning gun, different terms of lightning gun. I really like how this looks. Um, and, and, uh, you know, I think these are like different classes of guns that they added. Like, so this is lightning. This might be like a sniper lightning. This might be like a shotgun lightning gun harpoon. This is very much reminiscent of the, of the, um, bomb lance with the little spear that they have going on here. Curious to see how that would, uh, end up being lightning. Um, this may be some kind of automatic or, or something. I don't, I'm not too sure, but lightning gun there. That is very cool concepts. Um, uh, shotguns loading version. So different kinds of shotguns, dude, this is nuts. Can you imagine some kind of like automatic shotgun where you're, you know, holding the gun, hold, just hold down the trigger and you're turning that mag and it just feeding to shells through and it's an automatic, very cool. Same with this, you know, gravity, letting that do the work, feed down into the chamber, every shot you're taking. Very cool. And this is some kind of pump. Now, this looks kind of what we have now with some guns. Like, that almost looks very Caldwell Rival-ish. Um, but, yeah, these are these are very cool. I, ultimately, I listen, I would love to have a shotgun with a mag on top like that. I think that's a, I think that's a pretty badass look. Um, shot, more shotguns. Drum mag shotgun. This one's pretty cool. And these are like the different, like, uh, these are what the barrel, looking down the bottom of the barrel would look like. So it's a four-point, three-point, single-point. Um, 
I pfft, I don't I could I was saw this earlier and I couldn't tell. I don't think it is, but this looks like one just giant shotgun shell, like just one giant buckshot. I don't think it is. Maybe it's like compressed <clears throat> air, so it's like a like a like for slug. Like you load a slug in here, it shoots really far. That'd be pretty cool. Um, little handle on the on the very uh, on the butt of the or the front of the gun here. That that's pretty cool. Look how this one loads. So it shoots four at a time, four buckshots at a time, and it's like a revolver, and it goes and it, so it looks like it holds a total of four shots. And you get four buck shots each shot into that. It was pretty cool. And a little deadly spike at the bottom. That'd be dangerous. And these, <laughs> these are nuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, the, what the hell do you do with this? Like, obviously got a sling. This is some kind of like Gatling shotgun. And these are the chambers, like the reserves. Bruh, no butt on the gun. Looks like you just turn that and let that crank nuts. Um, and this one looks like it would be some kind of like singular shot, triple triple shot. Again, sling on it so you don't you don't have a butt of it. It looks like you hold it like this and you just mow it down and let it go. Mm. Legendary weapons. Look at that gun, dude. That's probably got four revolvers in one. And so you shoot it, and then it cycles over to the next one. Some kind of like, is that like a band? Oh, maybe it's like a double shot. So you shoot top and bottom at the same time. That's nuts. That's crazy. This is uh, like a revolver rifle. Pretty cool pistol. I like how that looks actually with the drum mag. Don't know how useful that would be. Look at this. This is really cool. It's a knife, Bowie knife with... Brass knuckles, spikes on the end, but the real kicker here, it's a revolver <laughs> with no with no uh, barrel. So maybe when you punch, it like shoots out like right in their face as well. Now that I would like to see. That's very cool. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's pretty cool. So a Caldwell rival hand cannon, but with the Romero hatchet on the front of it. I think this is like the, uh, no, it's not the flamethrower, but it's another kind of rifle. Pretty cool. Oh, early inspiration for the bomb lance, it looks like. So different concepts for the bomb lance. Hmm. This looks probably the most like what we have now. And then this is all looking a little too familiar. I, I did see this. So obviously the Talon has made its way into the game and then you have the mace at the very end which is like the Oberez. but from what this look at this handle it's like like a tommy gun handle pretty cool uh but these do seem like this is what made it into the game or if not this was hunt showdown concept for when they were transitioning over but well you know i Overall, I'm happy with the game that we currently got. I'm happy that that's the direction that they decided to go with. It adds a lot of versatility. And Hunt Showdown being one of the best PvP games out right now, I think. And also being no other... There's literally no other games like it. There's others similar, I guess. Like, I think the closest I can nail it down to is, is Battlefield 2042 Hazard Zone. Where it's like you and only a certain amount of other squad teams are in the map all going for these objectives, and then you have to extract and get out, right? And I think that is the future of PvP, at least for me. I love that aspect, and they are kind of the front runners. Hunt Showdown is the front runner for that. Like, they're doing it better than anybody else in the game right now. They're doing Battle Royale better than anybody, I personally, I think. And that's just the direction that I would like to see go with a lot of different multiplayer games. Uh, it's getting to the point now where I'd like I, I just want other games to start incorporating it. Unfortunately, Battlefield just totally flopped, and I wanted the Hazard Zone to work because of the modern weapons. But I'm happy with Hunt and where it's at now. I'm glad that that's the direction that they decided to go. Um, but it's very cool to look back and see what almost could have happened. So. But yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you guys enjoyed watching that as much as I did. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to see any more Hunt Showdown videos, check out my channel. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.